Hello again, I'm Dr. Scott Peck, and welcome to another step in the peace process. This is peace skill number three, get feelings out. In conflict, both sides or everybody feels victimized, and they don't feel heard. Getting feelings out is absolutely essential. It's not pretty. In fact, it's very, very messy. It's often very hostile and unpleasant. No one wants to be part of that, but it's extremely important to the process of peace. So as a peacemaker, again, remembering where we're heading, we're going to talk about mutual solutions and unity, <laughs> but that seems like about four light years away right now, uh, because right now there's all this pent-up anger or frustration, and that's got to spill out. It has to be heard. So your task as a peacemaker is to get those feelings out. So you might say to someone, if you were not a party to the conflict, let's say there were two people together, say, why don't you each share your feelings? Let's get them out in the open and let's just listen to each other. I'll listen to each of you. I just want you two to know that I am holding the space for healing. I'm already envisioning that you two are going to get past this conflict. The soup gets hotter and more difficult. If you happen to be part of the conflict because you have to somehow become a peacemaker, but you're a party to the conflict. So let's just say you've had a, uh, a conflict with someone that's close to you, in your most intimate relationship. You had decided to envision peace, so you're thinking, you know, I know we're angry, but the relationship we have is far more important than this. Ten years from now, I'm gonna, we're all both going to forget this. What's really important is that we take our relationship to higher ground. And I'm envisioning that that can happen, that this, what seems so terrible right now, we can get past that. Our relationship is more important to me than this argument. And it's not easy for me, but I, would, I think it would be healing and helpful to us if we could get our feelings out in such a way that we could honor each other. So I'd like to start by having you share your feelings with me, and I'm going to feed back the feelings without any response or anger or frustration or not telling you my side. I just want to get your feelings out and to hear from your point of view. And if you're willing, maybe we could switch roles and you could do that with me too. But at least for now, share with me so I can understand. And I'm, I guess maybe for the first time I'm actually listening to you because I've been so frustrated before I haven't been able to listen. If you could share your feelings with me. That's a hard invitation to resist. And notice what I've done. You don't have to do this, but I find it very powerful. Notice I said I'm envisioning that our relationship is more important than this. I'm making public my envisioning of peace. I'm not asking that person to do it with me. I'm not saying, now let's envision peace together, and because that opens the door to the other person say, you can go to hell. You know, I'm telling the person, I'm, en I'm envisioning that our relationship is bigger than this incident, and I'd like to take steps personally to, to move to a more healing place. So it's not, you haven't even asked for their vote. They're they don't have to agree with you that they even make the decision to create peace, because remember, they may not have gone through that process, but your words will soften the environment. A fire, when it's burning, requires oxygen. When the oxygen is gone, the fire goes out. Conflict requires oxygen, and the oxygen that a conflict requires is response. And uh, when you, you say, I hate you, you say, well, I hate you too. It requires a response, or it requires, you know, I hate you. Oh, that makes me feel so bad. Do you, why do you hate me? Why do you have to hate? But when that's all oxygen, you're feeding the ego, the conflict. But when there's no response, when I say, I know you're angry, get your feelings out so I can listen to them. Where's the oxygen? There's, there's nothing for the conflict to... You might say, you might rehearse again how angry you are and say, I hear how angry you are, so tell me more about your feelings. There's that love skill way back there in the love skills, tell me more. And if you haven't mastered that love skill, go back to the love skill series and watch the video on tell me more because it's brilliant, it's powerful, and you're going to use it in the middle of conflict a lot. Don't underestimate that. I'm taking away all the air that a conflict needs just by my attitude. 
lives. It's what you have to do. You're a peacemaker now. There's a price to pay. You're going to have to s stuff your ego down until it dissolves. You're going to have to stuff your anger down until it too dissipates. Or looking at it from a more positive way, you're going to have to let the love that you believe in flow into you and through you and out to the other person. It's a lot easier to accomplish something positive. You know, don't get rid of conflict. Bring in love. It's a much higher consciousness. I want to remind you again of this path that we're going down. Look at these next love skills that are coming up. Right after get the feelings out, listen with compassion. Express unconditional positive regard. Be a loving and detached observer. Encourage loving speech. Gently move past the story. Explore solutions for unity and justice. Create openings for forgiveness. Create a peace ending. I'm bringing these up because all of these skills occur simultaneously. They don't occur boom, 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 boom. They occur all together. But it's impossible to teach you these skills altogether or it'll just sound like a mishmash to you. So we're breaking them apart and we're saying you got to first get the feelings out and then instantly you have to listen with compassion and have unconditional positive regard and reflect back and encourage loving speech and create openings for forgiveness and explore solutions for unity and justice. It's complicated, but it's ex amazingly fulfilling and really joyous to the heart to to know as a peacemaker that you can do these things and every one of these skills that I'm teaching you I'm breaking it down so simply that you can't possibly say I can't do that because anybody can do it you may not want to do it or you may refuse to do it but you cannot say I don't know how to do it so the ball is in your court always on whether you want to be a peacemaker and even if you it looks like you're failing you still know the simple things you need to do to succeed and at this early stage when you get the feelings out it is going to look like failure even if a master peacemaker is at work and in the middle of when I'm at work creating peace it looks like hell at the beginning stages but I have the the love wisdom to know that there's a process going on that's converting this hell to heaven that's sucking the air out of this conflict and replacing it with love I know that that's happening even if there's no evidence you don't have to have the evidence and you won't have the evidence when you're at the early stages of, of creating peace so welcome to getting your feelings out and one more badge in being an expert peacemaker.